Our opening hymn is hymn 665. Hymn 665. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God of hosts, you clothe your servant Martin the soldier with the spirit of sacrifice. and Set him as a bishop in your church to be a defender of the Catholic faith. Give us grace to follow in his holy steps, that at the last we may be found clothed with righteousness in the dwellings of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Is not this the fast I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. <clears throat> For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. You, Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, 
and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick and in prison and visited you? Then the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. Give us grace so to follow in St. Martin's holy steps. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Martinmas, everybody. Happy feast day of St. Martin. Today, in the life of the church, in our church calendar, we remember Martin of Tours the saint after whom we are named here at St. Martin's in the Fields. And I thought in honor of our feast day, I'd tell a few of the more legendary stories. St. Martin of Tours was alive in 300s and grew up in northern Italy. When Martin was just 10 years old, right, so like a fifth grader, he started going to a Christian church nearby against his parents' wishes which, as I hear from some of our children, is opposite the experience many of us have today. He became a catechumen, a candidate for baptism, which at the time was a really big deal because it was a very intense process. But because he was the son of a veteran officer of the Roman army, just five years later he was required to join the military himself at age 15. He became a cavalry officer and was likely part of the emperor's personal outfit of guard. Martin was baptized just three years later at age 18, which is rather unusual for a soldier. In those first two years after his baptism, he struggled greatly with his faith and his career. He had trouble squaring the vocation of soldier the vocation which called him to wound and kill with the peaceability of Christ and the commandment, thou shalt not murder. And because one does not simply leave the Roman army, he had a difficult time retiring his service early. But through a, a series of very fortunate circumstances, he was able to do so and when he left the service, he went and lived the life of a monk and a hermit on an island by himself, where he could cultivate a quiet faith and recover from his service. As I was preparing for Martinmas this year, I started to wonder how it was we came to be called St. Martin's Church. Legend has it, 
and by legend I mean Sarah McCrory's history of the first 25 years, <laughs> that two men, Theodore Jones and Jesse Reese, from the committee to form the church, were scouting potential properties, and they came to this new area of Columbia, which at the time was lots of grass and fields, and they knelt down in one of the fields to pray about the future of the church. And as legend has it, that would become the property that we actually purchased, and they knelt down on what is now the point of the church. This was in 1950. 1950. So at the time when they were choosing the name St. Martin's, Sarah tells us that many folks really liked the in the fields part, and that was why they were persuaded to vote, because of the story of Mr. Jones and Mr. Reese. But if you look at the roles of founding members, you know, memorialized in the plaque in the narthex or the cross on the point, many of them were veterans who had, just a few years before, returned home from World War II. St. Martin's was founded in that big post-war church boom that the U.S. experienced. In Sarah's history, you hear that folks at the time really had the budding Korean War on their minds with their brothers and their children and their family getting ready to head back into war. This church was full of men and women who were trying to make sense of how to be faithful people after coming back from war. St. Martin is the patron saint of veterans, the patron saint of coming back from war and cultivating a new life of quiet faith. Not only are we a church that was built in the fields with the hope of growth around us, but we were built with the hope of peaceful service, honoring who we've been and who we strive still to be. Another story. At one point during Martin's service in the military, he was stationed in what is now France. As he was riding into the city of Amiens with his unit, they rode past a beggar who was near the gate. Now the man had barely any clothes on and it was starting to get cold. So Martin stopped and took the huge billowing red cape that officers of the cavalry wore and cut it in half so that the man would have a large blanket to wrap up in and stay warm. That night, Martin dreamed of Jesus wearing the half cloak that he had given away, and he heard Jesus say to the angels, Martin, Martin, who is still but a catechumen, clothed me with this robe. And when Martin woke up, the robe was mysteriously returned to wholeness. In those founding meetings of St. Martin's Church, folks talked about what kind of church it was they wanted to plant. They weren't just lackadaisically founding just another family church, but they had these ideas about the values that they wanted to embody. And so St. Martin's was founded on four principles. Number one, that it would be a mission-minded, congregation. Number two, that it would be a generous congregation that gave generously of their money. Number three, that it would be a congregation that evangelized the love of God to absolutely everyone. Number four, that it would be a wide tent for all kinds and flavors of Episcopalian. The first founding principle was to do mission, to take care of those who needed a hand up, to find themselves outcast or on the margins of the city, who need a warm cloak to wrap up in. That's something still baked into our DNA 
as a congregation. Reading through Sarah's history highlighted the missionaries that we've long supported, the thousands and thousands of folks that we have fed, the people we've helped keep warm, the soldiers we've welcomed into our homes, and the coffee hours we did with the USO so that they might have a sense of family while they're away. And in recent history, the folks we've helped set upright again after storms and hurricanes, the children we've helped learn to read, the immigrants seeking citizenship who we've given a leg up to and a sign of love, and the thousands of people in the Midlands who woke up one day two years ago and found that their medical debts had been forgiven. And we still have much to build on. $40,000 of our annual giving is budgeted specifically for mission and outreach. We don't fundraise, we budget it. And it is such a gift to the mission we do in this place. And it comes from the generosity of everybody who gives annually to that stewardship campaign, right? To the glory of God. And there is still so much potential in that $40,000. There is so much potential to be a real force of partnership with others in the community doing incredible work with those who need it most. There is so much potential to find those who have been forgotten and step into the breach ourselves, to be repairers of the breach. This kind of service and mission at the heart of our identity as a parish also fills us with the love and joy that tells the story of God's love, God's generosity, God's grace, God's forgiveness. It tells that story to all those who need that balm on their soul. us living into that third principle. We have so much to share here, and there is so much potential to share more. We were the first congregation in this diocese to be recognized as a parish without first having to become a mission, because we opened with such a strong and full membership that we got to skip that step. There is even more room for that kind of fullness and strength still. In fact, I see three pews right around there with room to fill. <laughs> One final legend for you all. Martin became known as a good and holy person, and eventually all the folk who knew him wanted him to be their bishop. God help him. <laughs> During his cure, a fellow bishop in Spain began teaching false teachings and was leading his parishes astray. The fellow European bishops tried to persuade him that he was wrong, that he was ultimately hurting his people, but the Spanish bishop would not budge in his reasoning and finally, his colleagues declared him a heretic. Now, this is around the time in Christianity when the Christian church was just beginning to enjoy being legal under the Roman Empire. And so these other bishops got really excited that they would get to try the Spanish bishop under Roman law. That meant he would be beaten and killed. Martin would not stand for it. He also thought this bishop was a heretic, told him as much, but he would not stand by and let him be murdered by his fellow Christians. He personally went with Bishop Ambrose. So out of all of these bishops, two of them went to the emperor to make a case and stop the execution. In his sainthood, he is remembered for this kind of 
courageous integrity. In Sarah's history, she writes of moments in history when the forces of the world strained the bonds of this congregation. Vietnam protests divided parents and children in this parish. We also have records that St. Martin's giving decreased significantly after the 1969 General Convention where the Black Episcopal Caucus worked for equal rights within the broader church. Just recently, we've been experiencing a pandemic, which for many of us has brought out our worst anger and our worst anxiety. I watched as we threw out our anger at each other on Facebook, as we threw out our anger about the church in groups and forums, as the office received letters and emails and comments on any manner of choices that we made or were made for us. In the midst of that, we saw a contentious election where we hurt each other greatly by the names we called one another online. And yet we still tried to be faithful. At one point in this pandemic, when we were still worshiping outdoors, we decided to erect a large party tent on the point so we could worship in all kinds of weather. When we approached Forest Acres for the permit to erect the tent, we were told that our sketch was wrong because it did not list doors for exit. <laughs> to which I heard Mitch yell down the hallway, it's a wallless tent, there are no doors, you can just walk out. I promise you he was just yelling this into the void and not to the nice people on the phone. <laughs> so perhaps our final lesson and prayer for today is to remember that fourth principle on which we were founded, that we might be a place which makes wide the tent, that we may be a people who approach one another with kindness, and curiosity first, not anger. That we may continue to grow among us the bonds of love and fellowship. That we may be a people that doesn't erect walls, but stays open and outward focused. That we may be known for our devout and fierce and courageous devotion to love. That St. Martin's may be a place not of there are no doors, you can exit how you'd like, but instead, there are no doors or walls. Come in from any direction and taste and see the goodness of the Lord in this place. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of light, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. In the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. In the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. For those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, and for the missionaries taken hostage in Haiti. Those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andrew, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Olivia Adams, Grace Allen, Les Antley, Marie Askins, Ginger Barfield, Bill Caniff, Maureen Culpepper, Lib Dixon, Jay Dorfer, Paula Flanagan, Judy Harris, Catherine McGrew, Ken Ormond, Paul Palmer, Michael Stockdale, Tim Thames, Pat Townsend, Richard Truluck, Nancy Wade, Becky Wallace, Nancy Wren, and others whom we remember at this time. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Put their trust in you. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Everybody. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. My name is Mitchell Smith. I'm the rector here at St. Martin's in the Fields. If you're new or visiting, we're delighted that you are here worshiping with us, and please know all are welcome to receive communion. Um, our, our, our big announcement is that tonight, tonight, after the five o'clock service, um, we are going to continue our celebration of St. Martin in the, Saint Martin in the Fields um, a, 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 with a pig roast. Um, and so we have a hog. Come eat it. Um, <laughs> But we're going to have a pig picking, and then um, we're also going to have oysters. Um, all are welcome. Please come and just bring a side dish. Um, and if you don't like to eat pork and you don't like to eat oysters, we'll have macaroni and cheese. Um, <laughs> and if you don't like to eat pork and you don't like to eat oysters and you don't like to eat macaroni and cheese, like just come and make an appointment, and we'll talk about finding joy in your life. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> We're having a party. Y'all come. Um, next week, next week we will have, we will shift from party mode to meeting mode as we have our annual parish meeting. This is me fill, fulfilling the canons of the church and giving you public notification that we are having an annual parish meeting. And so we will do the, the meeting in here so that it can be streamed for our members, but we are not going to do online voting this year. Um, to vote, you gotta be here. Um, as we try to transition into whatever this new reality is, um, we need to have people present. And one of the reasons why, you know, tonight's party, for instance, is, is, is so important, is that right now St. Martin's is very much um, with every church fragmented. We have a Tuesday morning worship community. We have a Tuesday noon worshiping community. We have a Sunday morning 8 o'clock worshiping community. We have the 1030 worshiping community. We have the 1030 outside group that is right here right now, but they're outside do participating in worship. We have the 5 o'clock worshiping community. Um, the way we get together is, is by having celebrations, um, but also how do we do the business? We're wrestling with how do we do the business of the church when we're so spread out? And that's a challenge. And so uh, uh, um, we are, again, it's going to be streamed for people who are YouTube people who are, are participating, but voting to vote, you, you have to be here. Um, and so please come and participate in the annual meeting. But also please understand that um, right now, um, as is life, and as we try to emerge from this pandemic, um, uh, 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 things are a little scattered. Um, and so we're, we're trying to navigate those waters as best as we possibly can. Um, brief, just sort of a, a announcement and reminder for folks. Um, the green zone is uh, uh, over here. They have green markings on the pew. The blue zone, we have blue markings on every other pew. Um, as case viral, I think Forest Acres has, has lifted its mask mandate, and so has Columbia. In the green zone, if you, you choose and want to, to remove your masks, um, you are welcome to do so. Um, blue zone, we ask that you keep it on and we stay separate. Just treat it like a restaurant. If you're moving, put the mask on. If you're sitting, wear it. Um, how's that sound? Um, but we're trying to just emerge from this thing as best we possibly can. So again, we're back to the zone system, um, and we case numbers right now are below 4% um, for percent positives, and we're, we're monitoring that. I will tell you that most of our decisions are all being made by physicians that you know and love. 
And so we're, they're members of the church, Bill Logan, Mark Mason. Like we're, we're, we're not just making things up. We're talking to, to well-educated doctors that are members of our community. And we're, not, we're, we're following um, policies that they've signed off on. Um, and so trying our best to keep our community safe and trying our best to, to navigate whatever this is. <laughs> And so please, um, uh, uh, for those that we're not moving fast enough, I apologize. For those to whom we're moving too fast, I apologize. Um, we're trying to shoot it right down the middle. With that, that's a lot of announcements. We're delighted that you're here. Please know all are welcome to receive communion at this table. And let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in an offering and sacrifice for all. Eucharistic Prayer C is found on page 369 of your prayer books or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, in this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. 
and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. But he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus of, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection and await for the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and our mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ has died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.